Hello and welcome back to Char Reads. My name is Charlotte and today we're going to be talking about books. What a surprise. I haven't done a book haul in absolutely yonks, but the other day I had to pick up my new book club book and I went to my local bookshop Broadway Books, which has finally opened up. What a lovely place. They even gave me a free tote bag this time and I was just in the mood to buy lots of books. So I just picked up everything that everything that I saw that vaguely recently I'd wanted to read. So we're gonna go through all of them. And then a few days later, I was walking around South Bank and noticed that the Foils South Bank branch had reopened as well. So I went in there and picked up two more books. So all in all, I have 11 books to talk about and let's get started. The first one I have is Homesick for Another World by Otessa Moshveg. This came out in 2017. So between her publication of Eileen and of My Year of Rest and Relaxation, um, it's a collection of 14 short stories and Etessa Moshveg is one of those people that I've just been like, I'm gonna read everything that you've ever written soon enough. <laughs> um, so uh, I just spotted this and thought I would grab it. Next we have The Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler, or as my boyfriend called it when he saw it across the room, The Power of the Sour. Octavia Butler was a very like well-renowned and respected black American author. Um, this came out in 1993 and is like a dystopian. It's actually set in the 2020s when um, like the world has been ravaged by climate change and capitalism, so uh, quite prophetic. I heard John Green talk about this book at the start of the year. I think it was the first pick for the Life's Library book club this year. Um, and I didn't, I'd never even heard of it. I know Octavia Butler, I remember a lot of people on booktube a few years ago got really into Kindred by Octavia Butler. Um, and at that time I thought it was just like some like new YA author, didn't realize that she had such a, like an influential history. So a science fiction book talking about the black American experience um, set in the future that kind of is the present uh, just sounds really interesting. The next book I have is Trick Mirror by Gia Tolentino. Um, I feel like I couldn't move for seeing this in every bookshop window when it was out in hardback, um, but I've never read any of her work. I don't know her any of her work at all, uh, but I feel like it was very well received. Um, so this is a selection of essays on like feminism, on living on the internet, um, and it just sounds like right for me. So looking forward to getting into this. Also, I really love the cover. I think it's just so beautiful and it was a good evolution of the hardback cover as well. Next, I have Into Thin Air by John Krakow. Um, this is about the 1996 Everest uh, mountaineering disaster um, where eight people died and John Krakow was one of the people on the mountain at the time. Um, I've read his other book, Into the Wild, uh, which came out a year before this. The same, I don't know how all of this happened so quickly because Into the Wild came out in 1996. The actual disaster was in May 1996. And then this was published in 1997. Like he had a lot going on that time. I did enjoy Into the Wild when I read it, I think last year, maybe two years ago. Um, and I talked about it in a video uh, and someone in the comments was like, you got to read Into Thin Air. It's just so much better because it's from his personal experience. So that is why I have this now. Thank you, random commenter. Next, I got We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver. Um, this is actually my book club book for this month. So I'm about a third of the way through it now. It came out in 2003, but you may know it uh, more for the 2011 film they made of it. Um, and it's about a, it's fictional and it's about a school shooter, um, but it's much more about the mother, which really surprised me. It's like far more about like motherhood, the indecision of whether to have a child and like how to how to relate to your offspring. Lana Shriver is a woman, by the way, that sort of threw me off when I first started. I was like, why is a man writing so thoroughly about the female experience? It's because it was a woman. <laughs> For me, this is kind of dragging because I expect it to be more about the son when I'm like a third of the way in and the boy is like three years old. And also it's from the perspective of the mother um, writing letters to the father who she's now estranged from. I think that format feels a little forced to actually try and get the details of the story across through these letters to someone that obviously was there and knew what was happening. The next book I got was Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. This is another book that I saw on booktube and just assumed was American YA. Every book I see on booktube, I just assume it's American YA. But when I finally actually read anything about it, I was like, this is so up my street. It's about this girl called Queenie. She's a uh, black, a British Jamaican living in South London, mid twenties, just trying to figure out like her life and romance and career. And that just sounds fantastic. So 
can't wait to read this one. Next, I have Raptor by James McDonald Lockhart. This came out in 2016. Um, and really, I just wanted to add to my collections of non-fiction books about birds that I'm probably not gonna read for a while. <laughs> I really like the cover, it drew me in. It has a chapter on each of the 15 birds of prey, so you can just get really knowledgeable about birds. <laughs> I found increasingly I just want to learn a lot about very specific non-fiction subjects. <laughs> and for some reason birds is what I keep buying. Next I have another penguin nature book and this is The Shepherd's Life, A Tale of the Lake District by James Rebanks. Lauren Wade, a booktuber, made a video a couple weeks ago of like 10 like really British books to to read while you're you know drinking your tea and eating your scones. Um, <laughs> I just thought it was really quaint and I just yeah I enjoyed that video and she mentioned this um, and I know nothing about shepherding, shepherdry, shepherding, never even been to the Lake District actually but I just just like nature books um, and it's pretty it's pretty short it's only like 250 pages I think it's the kind of book for when I'm hankering for a bit of outdoors this is really gonna fill that hole I'll leave a link to the video that recommended this down in the description as well the final book I bought in my Broadway bookshop spree um, was The 24 Hour Wine Expert by Jancis Robinson um, one of my lockdown goals my only lockdown like hobby has been to start a wine diary with my boyfriend so we have like a red book and a white book and we just note down the different grapes and like one sentence review we've been pretty slack recently to be fair but I saw this and I was like oh I could just read a short book and have all of this knowledge already and just like be that that twat at the table that's like mm, very full-bodied I think I'm okay with wine already I have this knack I don't know why but by the age of like 19 um, you could like give me a sip of wine and I could take like a fair stab at which country it was from. Maybe that's just like associations and really good guesswork. Um, but I've always liked wine. I like drinking it. I like smelling it. I like talking about it. But I've never done so with, with any actual knowledge. Um, so I feel like this is like a hundred page book, uh, really short and sweet. And it's going to make me feel like an expert in 24 hours. The next book I have is Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. Um, yeah, I bought this in the foils because I mentioned it in my video about Happy by Darren Brown. He references this um, towards the end. Danny Kahneman is always being mentioned on Freakonomics and like other economics podcasts. So I feel like I already know the broad strokes of what this book is about. Uh, but Danny Kahneman, he won the Nobel Prize for Economics. Um, he's also more of a psychologist, behavioral economist. And uh, yeah, this is just about all of that. And finally, guys, Summer by Ali Smith. <laughs> With spring, I waited for the paperback, but I just couldn't, couldn't do it this time. So this is the fourth of the season's quartet. Um, and it just came out last week. I'm really trying to push through. We need to talk about Kevin so I can read this because I want to read it so much. I need to lower my expectations because I don't want to, I don't want to like be like, oh no, it's only a five out of seven. Um, but I am extremely excited about this. I have no idea what it's about, to be honest, but judging from the other season books, it's going to weave together some characters that are very different and different ages and some random old literature and music references and art references and somehow feel very, very present, um, but also long lasting and I can't wait. So there we go, a chunk of books I brought recently. I feel like whenever I see book hauls on YouTube now, they're like, oh my God, a huge book haul. I bought a hundred books and like, why? I did one of those videos um, years ago where I bought like loads of books, mostly so I could film a video about having bought loads of books and it didn't feel good. I think it's a shame book hauls have to be so sensationalist. So this is just a book haul. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another one soon.